Hi, everybody. I just wanted to remind you to check your email inbox today to see if you won any of the prizes to the personal development school to become a member. We have our lifetime membership, so you get access to literally all of the courses for life, um, along with all the different event features we have. So the daily community events where you can practice communication scripts with our trained coaches and facilitators, our accountability webinars, all those different features, as well as the four live webinars every single week with myself, um, where you can ask me your questions, you can type them in, you can chat them in on camera, whatever you prefer. Um, and all of that was given out as prizes. And we had so many amazing submissions. I also just wanted to say a huge thank you to everybody for your super kind words, your vulnerable shares. And because we had so many wonderful, submissions rather than giving out just one lifetime membership and one year long membership. And then the staggers of the other um, memberships, the three months, six months, we actually doubled up on everything and are giving out two of everything instead. Um, because we just, we were like, oh my gosh, so touched by all the amazing submissions. So thank you again. And please check your email inbox right now. Okay, so I'm going to jump right into this video because I'm doing a series and don't want to give anything away too quickly. So I'm going to take you through an exercise and this exercise is designed to help you see why you keep attracting people and relationships that you're not happy with. And obviously there will be a focus on romantic relationships, but you can actually do this exercise from the context of like unfulfilling friendships, um, co-working relationships, you know, people in your life that you feel like you keep bringing in and then having different potential challenges or issues with. I want you to start and you're going to see by the end of this video, like, oh, this is exactly why I keep having these same patterns of relationships in my life. And then I'm going to tell you a little bit about what you can do. So first thing, think of the last three serious relationships, ideally romantic, but also you can be like, hey, this romantic partner and these two friends where I had different challenges or issues. Think of those people and think of the traits or behaviors they had that really got under your skin, really affected you, really triggered you. And you can pause this video whenever you need to. And for fearful avoidance, if you want some suggestions, some really common themes I often see are if somebody broke your trust, if people were inconsistent, if you felt like you were with somebody who didn't consider you, who made you feel like they were taking advantage of you, who ignored your boundaries, who were critical, volatile, things like that. So so like towards you, right? Like there was a lot of drama. You were on the roller coaster with them, things of that nature. So try to think of traits and behaviors, okay? And try to write out as many as you can think of, especially if there were common threads between all three. So for example, you might see, like let's say you're just thinking of the last three close people. Maybe it was a friendship you had a pain point with. Maybe it was a um, boss in the workplace and then an ex, right? And try to look at like, were there any commonalities where like they all made me feel like they ignored my boundaries and took advantage of me. And like, that's a resounding, you know, this is a big one for me. So, so try to think of the different traits and qualities, pause this video as needed to write them out. Um, and ideally you want to come up with like four or five, um, big common themes or four or five that you can sort of conglomerate together between those top three relationships. And then what I want you to do is ask yourself, and this is our next step of the exercise, where do I show up this way in the relationship to myself? Okay. So where do I break my own trust by maybe not considering my own feelings when making decisions or commitments, um, by perhaps not being consistent, um, with what I say I'm going to do, right? And and following through on it, especially for the things that are important to me in my life. It's a form of breaking trust. Um, or by not um, taking the time to express my needs, express my boundaries and show up to support them. And by not doing that, it's a form of breaking my own trust too. So try to look, where am I doing that? Or if you had the example of somebody didn't make you feel considered, where do I not consider myself? In any of the seven areas of life, in career, around money, um, emotionally, mentally. So like with your thoughts, your opinions, ideas, beliefs about things, um, physically, your physical body, how you care for yourself physically, um, relationally, spiritually, like where do I not consider myself? And then what about the taking advantage of, taking advantage of one? If that was a big one for you, where do I take advantage of myself to please other people? 
Maybe I people please. Maybe it's at the expense of myself and at the expense of my time. Maybe I don't have good boundaries around those things, which brings us to ignoring boundaries. Do I struggle to show up for my boundaries? Where am I really critical of myself about things in any of those seven areas of life, about how I show up in relationships, about how I am with money, how I am with um, friends, family, um, how I am in my career, whatever it might be, your body, your physical appearance. So try to notice that the things that really set you off the most in other people are usually yours. And the reason they set us off so much is because they're mirroring back to us these different dynamics. And also a huge reason that we keep bringing these people back into our life is because we attract what we are. We attract what we are because our subconscious mind likes the familiar. It wants to see, okay, here we go. This is my subconscious comfort zone. This situation is familiar to me. So I'm going to keep like reattracting these different dynamics because it's working. I'm surviving. So I must be safe. And so even though our conscious mind might say, ouch, this hurts me. Ouch. I don't want this type of situation. I don't want to. Um, and like a big one for FAs too, right. Is, um, cheated, right? Like, Oh, you were cheated on. And it's like, usually when you look really closely, there's this element of, um, did you cheat yourself in that relationship? Did you settle for things that you weren't okay with? Did you pretend like things that were okay with you when they weren't? Did you ignore and not speak up about things that were affecting you? Did you cut corners on yourself for other people's sake, you know, like without considering yourself equally, all of those are like, and, and, and so this is shadow work, right? This is like our, us seeing our shadow in the relationship to self and how we are, um, what bothers us just in relationship to self first. And so these subconscious patterns, they come from trauma first. These maladaptive coping mechanisms we have in relationship to self, they come from painful events first. So it's not like me saying, oh, it's your fault. But then what happens is until we go in there and identify them and recognize that those things are there, we keep really valuing those same things in external relationships with others. And then we have to change, right? We have to actually do the work to change these things. So I have a course you can check out for free for seven days all about shadow work. It helps you identify these. There's also other places your shadow exists. It's not just in relationship to self, um, which is like a spoiler for the course. Um, will help you get some really big insight into other areas. And then it also helps you do a little bit of reparenting, a little bit of deep, you know, re reconditioning, reprogramming work to get out of these patterns. Because until we change these in relationship to self, we're going to see, keep seeing these same types of personalities and figures come back into our lives in different forms. And we're going to see that even though our conscious mind is like, oh, something's off, our subconscious mind shows up and invests in these people, invests in these situations kind of at our own expense, but it's because our conscious mind may logically get it, but ultimately it's our subconscious mind making those decisions, um, driving those behaviors. And so until we do that work at the subconscious level to reprogram what our shadow is, we may find ourselves continuously um, having these same types of personalities or people on the horizon. So a really powerful work to do, really great thing to do a deep dive into, hopefully answer some questions about like why there's these same types of people or personalities that get under your skin. Um, and also very valuable to do for, for your in, own inner healing. So, um, check out the course for free down below for seven days. Um, and, um, if you have any other future questions about this, please post them in the comments down below. I'm super curious to hear, um, what other questions you have. And thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe if you're enjoying this content and I will see you in future videos.